The following program was first shown in September 1999 when football broadcaster Brian Moore interviewed Peter Osgood. This program is now repeated as a tribute to the former Chelsea and Southampton striker who died this week at the age of 59. <laughs> I've come to Stamford Bridge today to meet a man who some 30 years ago had this place buzzing. Osgood is good, is what the Chelsea fans used to shout. They were right, he was. Peter Osgood wore the number nine shirt of Chelsea with great distinction. Peter fitted the bill perfectly in those swaggering days of the 1960s. Chelsea's Kings Road was a dazzling place and the Chelsea team played that way too. Peter Osgood was a prolific scorer, 103 goals for Chelsea in 276 games. After that, his career took him to Southampton for four seasons and more goals. So you finished in 1979. What direction has your life taken in the 20 years or so since then, Peter? Well, when I first came out of the game, Brian, uh, it was a bit, of a, a bit of a culture shock, let's be fair, for a player that's been... You know, sort of in the game for about 18 years, you know. So, uh, basically, I had a year off just to, to look at things and reassess things. And then, uh, then I went and bought a free house pub uh, in, in Old Windsor with, with Dean Hutchinson, my, my big sparring mate, to be honest. Yeah. Was that good news? Well, it was, yes. Uh, it was fantastic news, really, because it was a free house and, and we worked very hard at it. And uh, we had a lot of fun. We had five years there. But at the end of the day, we, we, we fell out because of uh, uh, two ladies, you know, and... Uh, I had a, a girlfriend living there, or, and she became my wife, and then he had a girlfriend living there. And we had problems, and we'd never row Hutch and I, because we're like brothers, he's my best mate. And in the end, we had a little, a little a frank, a little fight, and, and I said, big fella, we've got to get out of this, you know, we, we can't do this. And so we sold it. Are you still mates with him? Oh, big mates, yes. He comes and stayed with me last weekend at my birthday. Yeah, he comes down. Yeah, he's my best mate in life, yeah. He was uh, a great player, played with up front. Um, I don't think I'd have swapped him for any striker, to be honest. Yeah. You know, on his day, he was terrific. You know, and I played with some good ones. Um, he was big, strong, too brave for his own good, to be honest. And, and a smashing lad, you know, never let you down. Tell us how you came to sign for Chelsea in the first place. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a funny story. I mean, I was captain of, of Windsor in the under-11s. I was captain of Berkshire, and you know, my first aim was to play at Stag Meadow, where Windsor still play today. And then uh, I captain of Berkshire and uh, Elm Park, you know, to play at Elm Park was like Wembley yeah, to Reading. us. That's yeah. right, Reading, Reading. And it was beautiful, so, I mean, that was lovely. And anyway, all the scouts come and watch us, you know, watch these young kids. Well, nobody fancied me. I never got a, a call at all. So, and I was scoring like 50, 60 goals a season through the local club, school, and everything. So anyway, I just thought, well, that's it. And then I got a trial for Reading, and they, they turned me down. Palmer Park went there. He said, well, no, so, you know, I said, right, fine, no problems, don't worry. Then I got a trial for Arsenal. Um, a guy called Les Marks, who was a uh, spit old boys, uh, who I was playing for at the time, he said, uh, Arsenal want you to trial. And I said, look, Les, if I can't get in the Reading side, that's a waste of time to go up to Arsenal. So I just ripped it up. So then about... Two or three months later, I was playing in the uh, 16, because uh, obviously he signed at 15 then. And I, um, I got a guy called Bob Snation, my uncle Bob. That's why they called me the man from uncle, to be honest. He wrote for a trial for me. I was playing in the, uh, in the local Sunday side with him. And he's all grown ups, and I was murdering him, really, to be honest. And he wrote up for a trial. And uh, he said, my brother said, you're definitely going on this one. You're going to Chelsea at Hendon. And he said, I said, well, it's 11.30 Saturday morning. We had a big cup game in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. He said, look, I've told the fella, you know, we'll have a chat with him before we get there, but you're playing and you're going. I said, all right, my brother. So I said, right. Off we went with a secretary, a guy called Len Hill. Off we went, saw a guy, a lovely man called Dick Foss, who was Dick down Foss here. Dick Foss used to Dick play and, here. Yeah. Well, Dick and Dickie yeah. Spence who used to play as well, oh, yeah. Course. And they were the two running it. Dick was the main man, Dickie Foss, and uh, Dickie Spence was the, was the training coach for me. And uh, we just said, like, Mr. Foss, I said, look, can I, I'm Osgood from Windsor, so I know you are, son. Can I play in the art first half hour trial game? Because I've got a big gun. Cup came for spit in the afternoon. He said, off you go. And after about half an hour, he said, uh, first of all, he said, will you play now? I said, I can only play half an hour. So after half an hour, he pulled me off. He said, can you come in the office, son? So I said, what's that for? He said, sign here. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's a load of scouts out there who want to sign you now. He said, they ain't going to get you. And that's it. And that was simple as that. It means, of course, if you hadn't torn up that Arsenal invitation, you could have been an Arsenal player instead of a Chelsea player. Oh, don't say it on telly, please. <laughs> well, I mean, they were fantastic clubs. And funny enough, as a young kid, I was an Arsenal supporter. 
you know, but uh, when I came here, and obviously when my uncle Bob first, and that's how he, he, I got to know, I was, used to stand on the big bank over the far side there, and uh, I got to become more of a Chelsea su supporter because I came here more often, and uh, to, to come and get a trial for him was fantastic, so, but that was it, and, and of course I came into the side, and it was like uh, Jim McCallion, Peter Houseman, Johnny Boyle, I mean, it was just fantastic, Johnny Hollings was our captain. And that's what it was like in them days. There's all homegrown kids, and they were smashing. They, they, they took to me straight away, and, and it was great. Of course, the great thing about those glory days of the late 60s and early 70s, King's Road was a great, dazzling place to be, and the showbiz stars came down here. I remember Raquel Welsh, in fact, on the big match. We brought Raquel Welsh down here. I think she took quite a shine to you. Yeah, she did, actually, yes. Especially afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was a lovely lady, wasn't she? Yeah, thanks for doing that. It was smashing. Yeah, I always remember that. Yeah, but uh, I got a telling off from Dave that day. We drew with Leicester one each, and I didn't play very well. I think my mind wasn't on the game. Really? Well, no, <laughs> you could have done it after the game, not before it. But no, we we very lucky. I mean, I, uh, in them trendy times, we had a lovely man who's still here, Dicky Attenborough, Sir Richard. Oh, you know, yes. And we love him to death, Dicky. I mean, it's lovely to still see him. What a gentleman. And I always remember we we were playing Everton here, and I'd scored 99 goals in the league, and there's only five done it in Chelsea's history. And I went about eight, nine games without scoring. And I said to the people, I said, we're playing Everton. The England squad are going to be here with Alf Ramsey on a Wednesday night. And I said, I definitely scored my 100th league goal tonight. Anyway, I scored two. And I did a lap of honour around here. And the place erupted. It was fantastic. Everybody waited for me. And I went in the dressing room. I went, yes, and all the lads going, well done. I said, get the champagne out. And who was in there? Uh, Steve McQueen. You know, Dickie had brought him down. As a, and I sat there next to Eddie McCready. And I just sat next to him. And them 100 league goals went right out of the court. Yeah. And, you know, they went out the window straight away. I just sat next to this great man, and the only thing I forget, never got his thinking autograph. <laughs> but what a, you know, that's the sort yes. of place it was, you know. And uh, I say, Rackle Welsh come down, here and uh, you know, Michael Kane used to come, uh, Richard O'Sullivan, Dennis Walkman, all the lads, and that was smashing. And it really was on a Blackman, and it was a lovely time, as you say. And the, you know, the Beatles were coming through, the Stones were coming through, the King's Road was buzzing, and Chelsea were a great side. So it was super, yeah. And of course, the